Sushil Krishna. Uh, brother, can you make me the co-host so that I can share the screen if you don't mind? Yes, brother Rohan. Thank you. Hello, brother Rohan. I is made it, brother. Thank you. A very good morning uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, so we thank our Heavenly Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving uh, yet another day to worship Him in truth and in spirit. So we thank uh, our Heavenly Father for His abundance of mercy and grace that He has still counted as among the living. And in spite of uh, all this uh, commotions in this world, He has given yet another day to prove our faithfulness to Him. So we all know very well, dear brethren, that we are living in the very last days. Uh, the time is very short. Seeing the current situations in the world where uh, a lot of uh, war are happening concerning Israel, a lot of prophecies are being fulfilled in front of our eyes, it uh, really awakens us uh, to speed our uh, you see, the consecration and make your calling connection sure. So at this moment, uh, you see, we all know that uh, all the consecrated, you see, don't make up uh, to be of the little flock. So there is uh, a possibility that many of them may fall uh, from uh, winning the crown. So whoever consecrates, if a they don't make to the little flock. So, where do they fall? If you see the brethren, they fall or they become the part of the great multitude. So, uh, today uh, we are going to see what is the actual difference, uh, you see, between uh, the great uh, multitude uh, and the little flock. What actually differentiates between them and what actually separates uh, the great multitude from the little flock? For this one, we will be taking examples from the Bible. You see, uh, some of the incidents and narrations that are mentioned in the Bible and see what good lesson we can learn from them. And the first example, what we are taking is uh, from Esau and Jacob. Dear brethren, we know very well that uh, Esau and Jacob were actually twins. They were the children of the same father and the same mother. You see, Esau was a hunter. You see, he was a wild man. But Jacob was a simple man and uh, always uh, in the home. So, we know very well, you see, those who uh, stay in the home, they learn a lot of cooking. So Jacob was a good, uh, you see, a cook uh, and used to prepare good and delicious food. But Esau was a hunter, he used to hunt uh, and bring animals. So once what happened was that uh, Esau had been for hunting and uh, when he returned, he was very hungry and uh, he wanted uh, food immediately. You know, dear brother, at that time, Jacob was uh, very smart and he was uh, preparing uh, good food. So when Esau requested for food, uh, Jacob told, No, I can only give you this meal if you promise to sell the birthright to me. Okay, what is this birthright? You see, dear brother, birthright is actually double portion of the father's uh, inheritance or the father's property. In those days, uh, the elder son, you see the eldest son is to be given a double portion of the father's property. Why? Why they used to give? Because it was the duty and responsibility of the 
eldest son to take care of the parents when they are old. So, it was uh, entirely to Esau, but uh, if you see the Vidran, Esau was very careless in those things. Uh, you see, Esau did not uh, care or uh, he did not have much concern about the birthright. Uh, he was so careless that uh, he was ready to sell that one also. That means uh, he was not much uh, interested in his parents either. So when uh, Jacob asked him to sell the birthright, uh, immediately Esau sold it. Uh, you know, he said, uh, what is the use of me having the birthright when it doesn't uh, uh, quench my hunger? You see, uh, let us read these verses from Genesis 25th chapter, verses 30 to 32. Can somebody uh, read any of the brethren? Yes, sir. I'll read on the screen, brother. We can read from the screen, sister. Okay. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same bread or dates, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy bread right. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what Profit shall this birthright do to me? Very good. So he said, what uh, profit uh, shall this birthright do to me? So immediately, you see, uh, yes, I was sold it. Uh, and uh, he wanted to quench his uh, hunger. So he was satisfied. Uh, but later on, dear brethren, when uh, he was supposed to receive the blessings uh, from uh, his father Isaac, uh, Jacob had already got the blessings. So, yes, our realizing his mistake, uh, you see, he is full, he is full of tears uh, and he weeps and he asks for the blessings. Uh, but uh, it was too late. So, yes, lost the wonderful privilege, uh, you see, of uh, getting the birthright. So, it passed on to Jacob. But if you see, Jacob was uh, ready to take the risk for the sake of the birthright. He was ready to become a pauper, you see, and to even leave the house and travel and live in a very long distance, a very strange place, you see, just for the sake of the birthright. Tabaran, this is one of the, you see, major, uh, you see, uh, differences uh, that actually separate the little flock uh, and the great multitude. Therefore, Apostle Paul speaks about Esau and tells us uh, to be very cautious. Let us read Hebrews 12 chapter, verse 16 and 17. Yes, Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. Lest they be any fornicators or broken person as Esau, who for one Bushel of meat sold his birthright. For he know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You see, though he sought it carefully with tears, uh, you see, he found no place for repentance. That means, dear brethren, there was a time for Esau to be repented. But when the time was over, even God did not accept his repentance. Therefore, dear brethren, it is a warning for us to be very careful. Why? Because, you see, dear brethren, God has promised a double portion for us. God has promised a birthright to us. You see, we are the first ones. You see, why we are the first ones? If you see, God's fruits of the Holy Spirit, God's fruitage of the Holy Spirit, you see, the first class of people to be resurrected from the dead is the little flock. After Jesus has head, it is his body members who are going to be resurrected as a first, uh, you see, fruits of the resurrection. So, as firstborn sons, you see, 
God's uh, double portion belongs to us. What is this double portion? You see, we all know that all the dead are going to come back uh, in the resurrection in the thousand years. Uh, you see, and uh, they are going to uh, receive uh, eternal life. Uh, you see, we all know that one very well. Uh, but uh, what is that which God has promised to the church? Uh, God has promised not just eternal life to the church, but it is eternal life on the divine nature. You see, what is the divine nature? What is the speciality of the divine nature, dear brethren? You see, divine nature, you see, uh, means a nature which God himself is having. You see, huh? where there is no death, you see, uh, no possibility of death also. There is life within uh, ourselves. So this is the main portion which God has reserved for the church. So regarding attaining of the heavenly salvation and be partaking of the divine nature, the little flock, uh, you see, are not uh, careless. You see, but uh, the great multitude are so careless that sometimes, uh, you see, they jump into the world uh, just for the desire of uh, some worldly things. Uh, you see, and uh, they forsake, uh, you see, and they forego the crown, the birthright. So once if we sell the birthright, once we forego the birthright, uh, dear brethren, at no point of time, you see, that we can get it back. Uh, it's very difficult, uh, you see. Yes, how even he found, even he tried to sort it out, uh, you see, by tears. Uh, did God give him uh, a chance? Uh, no, dear brethren, he found no, you see, place for repentance, uh, even though he sorted by tears. Uh. So, dear brethren, you see, we should be very careful. Therefore, Apostle Paul, in Hebrews 12, chapter 15, verse, uh, he warns us, uh, you see, that uh, we should be uh, diligent. Let us read that Hebrews 12, 15, sister. Yes, Hebrews 12, 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Very good, sir. See, lest any man fall from the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring to trouble you. That means, Devran, Satan tries to disturb us, you see, to create some unnecessary bitterness among the brethren, uh, so that uh, we may, you see, leave the truth, uh, you see, and that uh, brings a uh, lot of uh, disturbance to our mind, uh, you see, and draw away from the truth. Uh. So, regarding this one, the brethren, we should be very cautious. During such times, uh, uh, we should not, uh, you see, think as is our thought, uh, but we should be ready, like Jacob, to leave some of our preferences. What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. So we should be ready to let go some things of our life. Be ready to become a pauper. When we leave something, when we forsake something for the Lord's sake, Lord is never uh, unwrite us uh, to just forget us. Uh, he will definitely bless us in uh, either way. So this is the first uh, difference. Okay. Now, the second example is about the king and the queen. Okay, now let us read uh, about this one in Psalms 45, 9. Psalms 45th chapter, verse 9, sister. Yes, Psalms 45, verse 9. King's daughters who among the honorable women upon their right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ova, Ovia. Very good. So, here it says, king's daughter were among the honorable women. Upon thy right hand did the stand the queen in gold of a fear of itself. Now, who is this king and who is this queen? You see, this king is none other than our Lord, Jesus Christ. And who is this queen? It is, uh, you see, the king's uh, huh? bride, uh, the little flock, uh, you see, the faithful church. Uh, now, how is the queen? You see, it says, the queen is honorable among all the women. She's very precious. You see, the faithful church is very precious in the sight of God. And she is completely, 
You see, uh, decked with gold of her fear, and she is standing at the right hand of the king. That means uh, she is standing at the chief favor, an important position next to Jesus Christ. What did Jesus promise to the church? Huh? If somebody overcomes, even as you overcomes, Revelation 3.21, he will grant her to sit along with him on the same throne. You see, that's the promise that is given to the church. Therefore, we see that the queen is at the right hand, you see, with gold of her fear. Gold means what in the Bible? It's a divine nature. You see, the nature which God himself is having, you see, so she is completely covered in that one. Okay. Now, this uh, uh, king, uh, if uh, he has to like uh, or uh, please uh, or be pleased with a bride, uh, what should the queen do? How should the bride behave? What are the characters that uh, king likes uh, in the bride? Read Psalms 45, 10 and 11, sister. Huh? Yes. Psalm 45, 10, verse 10. Hear then, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear, forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. Mm. She says, huh? O daughter, hear can, O daughter, and consider. Incline than here. That means what? It's a very serious matter. Don't take it lightly. Because divine nature is not offered to any of the faithful, even ancient worthies also. But if God has given us this privilege, we should not be very slack concerning his promise. You see? And what is the advice that the king gives? You see, forget thine own oaths. Forget thy people, forget thy father's house. Then only the king will desire thy beauty, it seems. Now what is this uh, own people and father's house? Who is our father? Dear brethren, who is our father? Who is our old father? Anybody? Who was our old father before we came to the truth? You see, we are all children of whom? We are all children of Adam. You see? So he was our father, isn't it? We are all descendants of Adam, no? What does God advise? To forget your father's house. That means this earth was the father Adam's house. When we need to forget this world, once we consecrate, we can never expect to come back to this earthly salvation in any way, dear brethren. So, consecration is one way. We can never return to this earthly salvation. We've got only three opportunities. One, to be of the little flock. If you fall, then you fall into the great multitude. If you still fall further, you'll be going to second death. Therefore, you see, we need to forget our father's house. You see, what did the Apostle Paul tell to the Colossians? Uh, seek uh, things which are above. Set your affections on the things of above. You see, and uh, here the king also tells to forget uh, the own people. Who are the own people? You see, Adam means Adam is the father means uh, Adam's uh, children, the worldly people, uh, are uh, our own people. We need to forget them. You see. Certain relations, certain friends, you see, whom we had touched before we came to the truth, you see, we need to cut them off. We need to forego them. You see, if they are diverting us away from the truth, then we need to cut it off. You see, what did Jesus say? If your hand sins, better cut off the hand than entering the kingdom of God with both hands. So then entering a uh, going to Gehenna with both hands, uh, is it is better that you go with one hand uh, to the kingdom of God. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, we need to take uh, our consecration very seriously. Okay, now how is the queen decorated with gold? 
Let us read Psalms 45, 13. Ah. Yes, sorry. Psalm 45, 13. The king's daughter is all glorious within her clothing. He is of road gold. Very good. See, the king's daughter he is completely covered with gold. But how is she? Beautiful. She is glorious within. She is not uh, outwardly uh, beautiful. Not only that one. The main thing is that uh, she has got that inward beauty. Dear brethren, this is the character which God and Christ is looking in us. He is not seeing our outward beauty. You see how smart we are. You see how rich we are. All those things uh, our God doesn't see. Dear brethren. He is seeing our inward character. How much of Christ likeness is there in our heart? You see, that is what uh, you see Christ uh, is seeing in us. And he says, her clothing is of full, uh, pure gold. You see, that means, uh, how is her clothing being decorated? Uh? You see, it is, it is decorated with pure gold, it seems. How did she do this one? Read Psalms 45, 14. Read verse 14, sister. Yes, Psalm 45, 14. 45 is 14. She shall be brought unto the king in remnant of needle work. The virgins, her companions, which follow her, shall be brought unto thee. Very good. You see? See, she is decorated a robe with the raiment of needlework. Uh -huh. So what is needlework? You know the embroidery work they do for the robe. It's not machine made. You need to make it with a hand. You see? So, how is the embroidery made? Uh, the sharp needle is taken, you see, and the cloth is poked up and down, up and down, up and down. You see, several times the cloth has to be poked. Uh, then only a beautiful grand embroidery comes. Uh. Dear brethren, God has given us the robe of righteousness uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, on this robe of righteousness, we need to, you see, develop uh, and decorate it uh, with a divine character. Gold-like, beautiful character, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh. Now, can anybody tell me what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Anybody? Galatians 5.22 Joy, peace and love. Long suffering. Very good. Nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, temperance, faith, uh, against which there is no law. You see, these characters has to be developed. It's not so easy to develop. Uh, nothing magic comes and nothing magic works. Uh, it is only of hard work. Uh, you see, a lot of patience and perseverance uh, that uh, these characters are developed in the little flock. Uh, but... Uh, the great multitude are lacking this, uh, you see, decoration. You see, they're very careless. Uh, you see, they're not interested in developing, uh, you see, these beautiful uh, uh, characters uh, in them. Uh, you see, therefore, they become the part of the virgins, the companion of the queen. Now, who is the companion? They don't become the part of the bride, but they are the, you see, uh, bride's uh, companion. So this is the great uh, multitude of uh, Debutran. Therefore, you see, uh, they shall also be brought uh, into the presence of the king, not to be the queen, but uh, you see Debutran uh, as a companion. They lose the crown, you see, they lose the opportunity to become uh, the bride of uh, Jesus. So, the second thing we learn from this one is that, uh, you see, the character development is very important. And the first part we learned is that uh, in many trials, uh, you see, we should never let go our crown. We should be very, you see, cautious uh, of losing our crown. So this is the second one. Now let us come to the third one. The third uh, example is given to us uh, in the foolish and the wise virgin, the parable of the foolish and the wise virgin. We all know very well, you see, Jesus mentions about this parable in uh, Matthew 25th chapter, verses 1 to 4. Okay, can anybody read? Matthew 25, chapter, verses 1 to 4. Then they shall, <clears throat> shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the virgin, which took their lambs, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. 
and five of them were, were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their land, and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessel with their lands. Done. Very good. Sir. You see, the kingdom of heaven, that means the heavenly part of the, you see, salvation, that means the heavenly part of the kingdom is likened to ten virgins, it seems. You see? So, among them, you see, there are five wise and five foolish. Everybody went to meet the bridegroom. But uh, the foolish, uh, they uh, did not take the oil, uh, you see, in the lamp. But what about the wise? Uh, you see, dear brethren, the wise had the oil uh, not only in the lamp, uh, but also in their vessels. They additionally took some oil in the vessels, it seems. Okay. Now, next, what happened? Verse 5 and verse 6, sister. Huh? Matthew 25, 5. While the bridegroom tired, they all slumbered and slept. Matthew 25, 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Uh -huh. See, what happened was that, uh, you see, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept in. So their purpose of, uh, you see, going to meet the bridegroom was to get married. But what happened was that the bridegroom tarried his himself. He was supposed to come but did not come. What happened? Uh, you see, they all slept his hymns. But in the midnight, there was a cry his hymns. Cry what? Uh, behold the bridegroom. You see, why midnight? We have studied this one in the second coming class that our Lord Jesus returned in the midnight of uh, 6,000 years. You see, when the 6,000 years ended and the dawning of the 1,000 years, Jesus returned. And there was a loud cry saying, Behold the bridegroom. You see, we have heard that cry that uh, we, are, we are passed on from the stage of Parosha. We are living in the stage of Epiphania. You see, dear brethren, behold the bridegroom. So then what happened? All the virgins, uh, you see, they woke up and began to trim the lamps. Read verse 7, sister. Huh? Matthew 25, 7. Matthew 25, 7. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. Uh -huh. All the virgins rose and began to trim the lamps. But... Uh, what happened was that the foolish did not have sufficient of oil. But they were sufficient of oil for the wise virgins. You see, so their lamps began to get off. Read verse 8, sister. Huh? Matthew 25, uh, 7 to 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, give as of your all oil, for our lamps are going out. Ah, for our lamps are going out. Please give us a little bit of our oil. You see, uh, is it possible to give the oil? The wise tells, uh, if we give our oil to you, we wouldn't be having sufficient. So, don't waste time. Please immediately go to the market uh, and uh, buy the oil for yourself from the person who is selling it. Read verse 9. Hmm. Matthew chapter 25, page 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that, sh that shall and buy for yourself. Very good. You see? So then what happened was that, uh, you see, the foolish persons went to the market to buy the oil. But by the time, uh, you see, they came, the door was shut. You see, verse 10. So dear brethren, what is the meaning of all these things? What does all this represent? Uh, we know, we just now studied, you see, the queen. You see, the queen should be a virgin, isn't it? Anybody, you see, who is uh, marrying uh, uh, a girl should be virgin. So similarly, Christ uh, is uh, engaged to, is uh, 
bride and how is the bride the bride is a virgin you see they both are engaged the marriage will happen when it will happen only at the sir return of our lord of our master so until such time you see the virgin uh, church has to wait for the master see second corinthians 11:2 Second Corinthians eleven two, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one man, husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see, see, I have espoused you, engaged you to one man, uh, the Christ, it seems. Uh, so the church uh, and the Christ and uh, Christ are engaged. Uh, okay, now what is the meaning of uh, the lamp we all know very well psalm 119 and 5 it says uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet see light unto my path so it is the word of god so inside the lamp there was oil you see now what is the meaning of oil can anybody tell me what is the meaning of oil in olden days they used to use the oil to anoint the priest so what does it represent holy spirit very good it represents the holy spirit psalm 733 you see 1 to 3 so this oil was in the lamp isn't it thus god's uh, words has the holy spirit yes god's words is filled filled with uh, you see god's spirit uh, there is no spirit uh, inside the bible uh, but uh, that is not sufficient uh, because that holy spirit uh, a spirit of consecration the fruits of the spirit uh, where it should be it should not only be in the bible it should also be in the vessel now, who is the vessel we are all earthen vessel isn't it dear brethren See, God has given us the, you see, a portion of the Holy Spirit uh, inside this earth and vessel. Uh. So we need to maintain that one. We need to maintain that level of the Holy Spirit, dear brethren. Uh. You see, this is what uh, the lack, uh, the great multitude. Uh. You see, they don't uh, have the spirit of consecration. They don't have the zeal, energy. You see, for the Lord, uh, they don't develop uh, that character likeness of uh, Christ uh, in them. they are careless in that one you see they just only preach the word of god but uh, the wise virgins are not only you see they are virgins they are not only you see very careful uh, in filling their lamps with the oil they are very cautious to carry the oil in the vessels that is very very important brethren it is not sufficient that we just be virgins you see just because we are very beautiful in character okay god will accept us no 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 along with that one a very important thing that we should be wise also you see that means god is not going to marry son for a foolish virgin so we should be wise enough to be filled with a consecration a spirit of consecration so the great multitude like this one so what was the reply that was given please go to the market and buy it from the person who sells it that means there is a market that means there is a person who is going to sell it now who is going to sell it of course the one who is having the store of the one who is the owner of the oil is the one who sells it now who, where is this uh, owner who is the owner of the holy spirit who who actually owns the holy spirit tell me almighty god very good sister it is our almighty god so the seller is god you see now where does he sell it what do you mean by sell it oh brother the god sells how much money i should give tell me i will also pay a lot of money and get more of holy spirit dear brethren god doesn't take money you see he sells the holy spirit means what we need to be spent we need to buy it that means we need to you see huh make some expenses sir you see we need to sacrifice it it should cost us something we need to pay for it it is not so easy that means dear brethren we need to completely lay down ourselves as 
living sacrifice faithfully. You see, in olden days, there was a lot of sacrifice. No? We need to sacrifice ourselves as complete burnt offering. The whole burnt offering completely. As we pay, so much we get the Holy Spirit. If we completely give ourselves to the Lord, what will God do? God will completely give. You see, dear brethren, eh? his uh, spirit uh, to us. Uh, therefore, dear brethren, we need to be very careful in giving ourselves to the Lord. Uh, and where does God sell it? Uh? He, he, he sells in the market. What is the market? Uh? That is the world. If you go into the world, carrying this truth, a lot of experiences, persecutions will come, trials will come. In those trials only, you will develop the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Not just completely sitting silently, making ourselves consecration in a locked room. No. We need to be in the world. Face trials, dear brethren. In that only, what will develop? We will develop the fruits of the Holy Spirit, spirit of consecration. See, the great multitude, when they had the opportunity, you see, they lacked to develop uh, these things. Uh, you see, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but once, uh, when they realize their, uh, you see, mistake, and they go back to the world to uh, prepare it and come back, they come back, you see, they're preparing it. But that time, the door would be closed. Uh, we would have lost the opportunity. So, dear brethren, we are almost at the threshold. We should be very cautious and try to make him calling and sure as early as possible. And uh, whenever the Lord has given the opportunity to develop those characters. Okay. Now the last example what you are going to study is about Gideon. You see, we all know Gideon and his band. You see, the, the Midianites came and attacked uh, uh, people of Israel. You see, and uh, 1 lakh uh, 20,000 people came to attack Israel. You see, Judges 8, chapter 10th verse. At that time, God uh, selects uh, you see, Gideon and tells him to go and fight the Midianites. Uh, so read Judges 8, 10. Judges 8, chapter 10th verse. Judges 7, verse 1. The Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of the Haran, <clears throat> so that the host of the Mid Mid Midianites were on the north side of them, but the hill were of Moray in the valley. Judges you see, eight chapter verse ten. Now Zeba and Zalmuna were in Kako, and their host with them, about 15,000 men, and, all, and that were left of all the host of the children of the east. For there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. Aha. Uh -huh. One lakh and twenty thousand uh, Midianites had come to attack Israel. Then uh, God tells, uh, tell the uh, people of Israel, whoever wants to come for the war, let them come. So immediately Gideon gives an announcement. You see that uh, everybody who is willing to come for the war, they can come. So as soon as uh, Gideon makes uh, announcement, dear brethren, 32,000 people came. But God tells, no Gideon, this 32,000 people are more. Please tell Whoever is fearful, you see, whoever has fear and is frightened to fight the war, they can please return home. So as soon as Gideon makes this announcement, 22,000 go back. Read Judges 7, chapter verse 3. Now therefore, now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilad. And there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remain ten thousand. Very good, sir. So what happened was that uh, 
only 10,000 remained. And God tells who, even if this 10,000 is too much. You see? So, bring them to the water. You see, where I will test them. So, Gideon brought all the 10,000 people to the water. And, uh, you see, there, God began to separate these two people. So, one group of people, they completely put their mouth directly to the water and, you see, and drank the water. But other group of people, you see, they took the water in their hands and they drank, you see. So, those who took uh, water in the hand and who drank it, they were only 300 people, they brethren. So, those 300 people were selected and others were rejected. Read Numbers, uh, sorry, Judges 7, chapter verse 6. Hmm. And the number of them that left putting their hand to the mouth were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. You see, only 300 people, only these 300 people were selected and all the other people rejected verse 8. Okay? Now what happened was that among these 300 people, God told, you see, go and fight, uh, you see, the Midianites. How did they uh, fight? Uh, did God tell them to take swords, spears, uh, you see, and go and fight? No. They were just told to take two things. One is a trumpet and blow the trumpet. And second, you see, uh, take a lamp, you see, that is uh, hidden in a, uh, you see, uh, a pitcher, you see, they were supposed to break the pictures and let the light shine and blow the trumpets. Only this thing was supposed to be done by the 300 people. Read verse 20. Verse 20, sister. Huh? And the three companies blew the trumpet and break the picture and held the lamps in the left hand and the trump trumpets in the right hand to blow with all and they cried a sword of the lord and of gideon mm. you see the sword of the lord and of gideon see they did this thing and by the time they went uh, to near the battlefield you see all their enemies were already dead you see, they just went down, took the loot and uh, returned back. Uh, dear brethren, so what is the lesson that we have in this one? Uh, dear brethren, we also have an enemy, you see, who is uh, uh, coming to attack us. We have a warfare. Now, what is this warfare? You see, we have studied uh, in Ephesians 6.12 that our warfare is not with flesh and blood, uh, our warfare is with, uh, you see, uh, uh, spiritual uh, darkness, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, Ephesians 6.12. Now, for that one, what we should do? What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. So, we need to follow the master. Now, you see, uh, to follow the master, how many people come? You see, when the call was given, how many people came? 32,000 people came. But uh, when the details of war was announced, 32,000 went back. Only 10,000 remained, dear brethren. So what does it mean? Today many are called, you see, but few are chosen. Matthew 24, 14. Is it 22, 14? Isn't it? So the many people who return back are good believers. They are all very good believers. They just want to believe in Jesus. They don't want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. So once the terms and conditions of consecration are told to the, them, they fear, they turn back to the world. They say, oh, don't want all these things, risk, why fight and all, let us live a comfortable life. But uh, the 10,000 remained, those are the consecrated ones. But uh, just if we consecrate, is it sufficient? No. They are told to be brought to the water. Now, what is the meaning of water in the Bible? He, Habakkuk 2.14. Please read Habakkuk 2.14. Anybody?
Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 for the age shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Very good. You see, the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the whole world as the waters cover the sea. So, God's words is water. So, these people are brought to the water to see how they drink the water. Some people, they put their mouth directly to the water and just drank it. You see, but some people took it in hand clearly. You see, they saw it and drank it, giving glory to God. So, what does it mean? Dear brethren, just uh, listening to the truth uh, to just satisfy our uh, passions uh, is not sufficient. Just for satisfaction's sake, if you listen to the truth, uh, you see, hearing in this year, living in this year is of no use at all, dear brethren. We can't win the crown. That uh, truth has to enter us. We should be very clear. Filter the truth. What is uh, to be listened? What is to be assimilated? What has to be listened? You see, what not has to be listened? You see, we should be very cautious. Uh, listening to the false doctrines. Uh, this is what uh, God wants to people of Israel. They were, uh, you see, they had good zeal. Israel people had a lot of zeal. But it was not uh, as per the knowledge. So, proper understanding of the knowledge is very important. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells that there were some people who were just listening to the truth but never came to the knowledge of truth, it seems. See, 2 Timothy 3.7. Read 2 Timothy 3.7. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of, of the truth. See, ever learning means always I keep on listening. Any class you tell me, I'll come and sit. You see, but simply coming and sitting, what is the use? No concentration on the truth. You see, never coming to the knowledge of the truth, it seems. So these people were rejected. 9,700 were rejected. So it is not just sufficient if we just listen to the truth. In what uh, spirit, you see, uh, we are uh, listening to the truth? With what condition of our mind are we sitting to listen to the truth? That is very, very important. What does the Bible say? In Deuteronomy 6 chapter, you see, whenever you sit, whenever you stand, as you go out, as you come in, you see, you should meditate upon the God's words. That is the same thing you need to teach to your children. You see, whenever you sit and stand, go out, in and out and come, teach your children to, you see, meditate the word of God. You see, behave as per the God's uh, Words are different. Therefore, you see, this class of people are rejected. So with the 300, what did God tell? Take only two things. Blow a trumpet. You see, the lamp which is hidden in the, uh, you see, uh, the picture, break it. So what is that uh, uh, picture inside which there is a la lamp? Earth and vessel. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We are the earth and vessel. God has kept the spirit within this earthen vessel. This is the lamp, dear brethren. We should let our light shine before men so they may see our good characters and glorify God. You see, our character, you see, should glorify God. How do we glorify God? We should break our earthen vessel, break all our human nature, all our ego, selfishness, you see, all our bad characters of the old man has to be destroyed. Then only the new creature will shine as a light. You see, eh, just uh, letting the light shine is sufficient? No, dear brethren. We should blow the trumpet also. What is this trumpet? This is the preaching the word of God. Uh, witnessing the truth. Uh, dear brethren, so many people, you know, they, they, they just listen to the truth. Uh, they don't even witness. They don't go and share the truth to anybody. Lot of people are there in this world, dear brethren, who are waiting for love. Imagine if somebody would have not witnessed the truth to you, would you have come to the truth? No. The great multitude lack this character. They tell, oh, why should we go and tell anyone? It's God's work. God will do. God will bring them. No problem. Why should I go and tell? Dear brethren, we should tell. You see, it's a great privilege to be the tools of our master. If God wants us to use, it is really a great honor 
which is subject to him. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells, Who unto me if I don't preach the gospel? 1 Corinthians 9 16. Dear brethren, you see, we should always be ready to give answer for the hope that in that is within us. Think about the thousand years. Think about the resurrection of the dead. Do the worldly people know this one? No. They don't know. You see, just see the comfort, how they will receive this truth. You see, dear brethren, we should witness that this is one of the differentiation, dear brethren, not being selfish. Therefore, dear brethren, so what you studied is the four examples from the Bible, Esau and Jacob. You see, the king and the queen, the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, and last, uh, Gideon and his band. So among this, uh, the, you see, we have learned the good lessons. Uh, first of all, we should not be careless in our consecration. You see, and uh, we should be developing, uh, you see, Christ-likeness under trials. And we should not only be, you see, virgins, we should also be wise virgins. Uh, and uh, not only that one, you see, we should also be, you see, uh, smart enough to receive the truth and assimilate it and walk as per the truth. Proclaim the truth. So let our light shine. Let me bring glory to God. Dear brethren, so thank you for this opportunity. We thank our Lord.